Hey y'all, thank you so much for clicking on this episode of Pages from My Notebook, a True to Life podcast. My name is Erica, your host, and do I sound different? I should sound different. You want to know why? I got a sponsor. Hey. Well, it's actually just my mom. (laughs) She believed in me so much. She bought me this new microphone. Thank you, mommy. I love you. I'm very appreciative, and I hope it sounds much better and will have better quality for you all. Another thing you may have noticed is the intro has changed. Yes, I've been doing a lot of research on podcasting and I found that because it's monetized and my intro is Diary by Alicia Keys, which is a copyrighted song, they could snatch my entire life and it would be my fault because I didn't pay her for the right to use it. So there's no more of that intro. I really liked it. Hopefully I can find a replacement for it. Maybe I'll shop around for some different intros, but for now, Hopefully you like the one that I chose that is copyright free. (laughs) I'm super excited for this journey. Thank you everyone again who has clicked on this. Seeing my statistics within just three days of posting my intro and very first episodes. It just fills me with joy that you guys want to listen to little old me. So I hope you'll stick with me through this journey. Hopefully this will be a lifelong endeavor podcasting till I'm old and gray and even beyond then. So once again, thank you for tuning in here with this little, this little black girl with a big head, big brain, lots of thoughts. So I started with the idea of this podcast being monthly because I wanted to keep it authentic. That's the whole point, just what's on my mind at the time that I'm thinking of. And sitting here, there are two major topics that have been on my brain. So for the month of August, there will be at least two episodes, the one you're listening to right now and something else. I believe I'm going to release this one first. I think it'll set the stage for the second topic I'll be talking about. You'll get something else new this month. Hooray! My idea for the upload schedule is the first week of the month and the last week of the month. So something new at the beginning and then with all the craziness that goes on in the world in the in-between time, maybe it'll be something else that inspires me to talk about at the end of the month. But I have an entire notebook, literally, filled with different ideas, different outlines, going back and forth, a bunch of different topics. I want to intertwine some episodes about my college journey. I believe it's a story that I've had to tell many times and sit with myself. Even though I lived it, there are still so many things that I had to work through about it. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to start this podcast is my college journey was way, way, way less than perfect. It was nothing I expected. In some ways it was. In other ways, a lot of ways, I try to convince myself that it wouldn't be, but it came true. It's just a big lesson in trusting your gut, and I really want to talk about these things and share them, even though they're ever-evolving topics. The opinion I had on these things last year has completely changed, and they might change again in the next year or next week or next few months. That's the good thing about life. Nothing stays the same. We're always growing and evolving and changing. I'm very grateful to have plenty of people in my life that I can sit down and have really great discussions with. So without further ado, I'll stop talking. Well, I won't stop talking, but in this section, and we'll get on with this episode. So thanks for clicking and stay tuned. Today's episode topic is misogynoir. No, I did not pronounce misogyny wrong. The term misogynoir was coined by queer black feminist Moya Bailey in 2010 to address misogyny directed towards black women specifically in American visual and popular culture. Now this topic has been on my mind especially a lot, well, it is always there because I am a black woman. But every time there's a new resurgence in the Black Lives Matter anti-police brutality movement, people always keep black women's names in their mouths when we're the ones putting our lives literally on the line to protect, in particular, black men who do the most slandering. Black women's existence is always a hot topic. It's always up for discussion. It's always a picture of black women in thoughts thoughts? Nobody asks. Why are black women always a topic of ridicule and being picked apart? Everything about black women is always up for discussion. Our hair, our skin tone, our bodies, whether or not we wear makeup, how we treat men, why we can't keep a man, why we are so extra, why we're so loud, why we're so angry. Everything about black women is always up for debate. And why is that? And a greater question is, why are black men Why are black men always the ones with our names in their mouth? Why are black men always the ones the first to stand up and slander us? 
Now, obviously, it's not all black, not all men, okay, blah, blah, blah. But I've noticed it's a lot of black men. It's either it's either you're putting black women on a pedestal where Nubian goddess queens who can do no wrong and you're actually ignoring our humanity and that we're multidimensional beings who don't always have to be strong and independent and don't need nobody for nothing. You're ignoring that we can be vulnerable. It's okay for us to be sensitive. We have emotions. And on the other hand, we have black men who create dark-skinned daughters and trash dark-skinned women, calling them roaches. Um, people saying women are catfishing by wearing makeup when their beards don't connect, when your barber uses that black spray on your hairline. That's no different than my got to be holding down this lace. <laughs> <laughs> in this episode i cover some of the things i would say most but there's always new levels to the fish that men bring to the table so the criticism of black women and the misogynoir we face from everybody and especially our own men as i mentioned before there are many ways that black women's existence is policed for no reason but one of the most prominent ones is in love and dating. Now, there's been a recent influx in criticizing black women for dating out, that's as in dating outside of the African-American race, and I've seen things that black women are tainting the purity of black bloodline. They're responsible for the breakdown of the black family. We're betraying our race. Who are we? How dare we? And I just want to say, first of all, as people, why are we not open to one human being in love with another human. Now, I understand the importance of black love. I follow a lot of black love pages. I love love. I love seeing black love, especially because we're in a country where black love is literally spat on, trodden in the dirt, back to slavery. Families were literally split apart physically, mentally, emotionally. And I understand where the trauma comes from because slave masters, white men, took advantage of raped, pillage, took away the autonomy of consent and the ownership of black women's bodies, literally. So I see where the trauma comes from with associating black women and white men. But the thing is, the thing is, men and black men specifically, now when I say black men, obviously I don't mean every single one, but if you're triggered, the shoe might be the perfect fit. I worked at DSW so I could measure you. I already know it fits. Anyway, why does a black woman dating a non-black man, why is that the downfall of the black family when there are black men that consistently trash black women for no reason? Now there's a large discussion about uh, preferences in dating, which everyone can have a preference. Somebody, somebody can like tall, dark, and handsome, skinny, and lanky, and nerdy, or quiet, and brooding, or outgoing, and boisterous. Yes, you can prefer all those things because everyone as a human has a different personality and need in their relationship. But when someone asks you about your preference and your first instinct, the first words out of your mouth is, well, it's because black women don't do this or it's because black women do this. That's not an answer. I didn't ask you why you hate black women. I mean, that was next. You just started answering it for me. But it's not a preference when you can't say, I just love white girls because I love long, blonde, straight hair. Or I love white girls because they... Anything else I was about to say would be inflammatory so i'll stop myself there but when you have a preference you say i love this thing because of x y and z when people ask me why i love beyonce it's because she's a visionary she's an amazing performer an upstanding black woman she takes care of her family she taught me how to be myself how to own sensuality and sexuality as a black woman i'm not out here saying oh it's because rihanna got a big forehead so no when you like something <laughs> you talk about why you like that thing, not why you hate another thing, which causes you to like that thing. I hope that makes sense. But the greater thing is, black women are supposed to stand by black men through thick and thin, hell and high water, literal hell, the bars in hell for what we ask you guys to do. And in return, we get what? We get futured. We get TI'd. Now, if you're not sure, Future, the rapper who is known to have multiple mothers of his children and not pay child support besides the fact that he's a, I'm assuming platinum selling rapper at this point, 
And we have T.I., who is a horrible misogynist, cheats on his wife constantly, and takes away the autonomy of his daughter's body by discussing her hymen on the breakfast club or wherever on the internet. So it brings me to ask the question, if the black family is so important to black men, why are they not doing their part? Why is it that black men are these untouchable figures and pillars of the community? Let's break it down. Because on one hand, black women are the matriarchs, they're the backbone of the family. They're the strong, independent black woman, which yes, can be a positive thing because it's good in this society to instill in women that they can have ownership and be a boss all on their own. But we take this trope too far with black women. When we ascribe the strong black woman or the mammy trait to black women, we take away all other facets of their identity. This is why black people believe that therapy isn't for them, that it's a quote unquote white thing, because we're taught that our emotions and vulnerability are a sign of weakness and we're supposed to be strong 1000% of the time. And that's completely inaccurate. And from this strong black woman trope, black men, tend to say, oh, she got too much going on for me. She's doing too much. She's pushing too hard. When you're sitting on the couch playing, what a, what a game, what games the men play? Madden? 2K? Yeah, 2K and scratching your, mm, let me not. <laughs> and you're trashing black women for what? For being more ambitious? When does the switch flip? When does strong, independent black womanhood become negative? That's the question I have. What, is there a balance? Will we ever be able to win? I don't know. I don't know. Now I want to get into how black women's leadership really doesn't benefit us in the end. Now this can sound a little strange, but for example, Black Lives Matter, the movement, the organization was started by three black women. Yes, the hashtag you see everywhere is started by three black women, but did you know that? Hmm. When you think of the Black Lives Matter movement, what do you think? When you think of civil rights, what do you think? Malcolm X, MLK, Marcus Garvey, etc., etc. Newsflash, the women were behind it all. What did Beyonce say and upgrade you? Um, I can do for you what Martin did for the people. Ran by the men, but the women keep the tempo. It's very seldom that you're blessed to find your equal, so play the part and let you take the lead role. Believe me. Come ha- Oh, okay. <laughs> See how the stand popped out? <laughs> See that? Okay. I say that to say black women are behind the scenes. We're behind the scenes, we're organizing the movements and then we get paid dust. There are riots in the streets for the murders of black men. Let me preface this by saying, I believe that we should march for everybody. Every black life deserves a march, deserves to be fought for, deserves honor. But we only see large uprising marching the streets for the deaths of black men. Most recently, George Floyd sparked protests all across the country. But for Breonna Taylor, for example, she gets turned into a reference you put at the end of a tweet to gain traction. She gets turned into a simple hashtag. We ask, what about her? What about us? What about black women? and nothing gets done. Her killers are still walking free, able to go to the beach with their families, but the killers of men, not all of them, obviously, for example, George Zimmerman, who murdered Trayvon Martin, is still out here somehow thriving. Someone bought the gun he killed him with for over $100,000, which there's a special circle in hell. There's just, there's hell, and then there's hell's basement. And then there's the cellar in Hell's Basement. That is reserved for the scum of the earth that would do that. Getting back on topic, black women, we start the movement, we feed the movement, we're behind the movement, we organize, and then we're told by our men to stay in our place, that we have no place or space on the front line. Where does that leave us? We stay behind the scenes doing all the work and the men take the credit and then they come home to us and they're no more grateful than they would be if we sat silently. So I asked myself, as a black woman, how do I know when enough is enough? When do I get to draw the line that I need to start fighting for myself more than I fight for you, more than I fight for the man? When do we get to that distinction? I wonder. It's a very personal decision. And of course we have black women that are pikmishas, like the aunties that still support R. Kelly for whatever reason. There are so many cookout songs. You can let go of Step in the Name of Love, but you want to be chosen so bad you lack the self-esteem so much that you would settle for a child molester than to be satisfied with your own existence by yourself? Really? Really? I'm still developing how I feel about black women that do that. I know how it makes me feel, 
But I, I feel like there's something more that's underneath that layer, but that's for a different time. It goes to show who is there for black women. We're there for each other. Not always, obviously there's a separation between us, but I think the greater thing that I've learned within this is that black women, we all share the same pain in some way, shape, form, or capacity. It's how it manifests in us that's different. I find the power and the strength in healing, in being able to sit around a table with other black women and express how we feel. And it's very cathartic, just like I'm talking out my feelings about this right now. I'm talking out my feelings about this right now and I'm sharing like I do with any other podcast. I share it with people in my immediate circle. The black women who share these experiences, we know what's going on. Black people don't have to tell each other black lives matter. Well, I'll take that back because there are some of you homophobic, transphobic, all the other phobics, is ableist, colorist, sexist, Negroes that don't want to acknowledge all black people. So let me retract that. But I say that to say people within the same community have the same ideas. So when we talk about our struggles, it's healing for us, but there's no way for the effects to be the people that need to hear it aren't hearing it, is what I'm trying to say. So how do we get our black men to listen to us? What will it take? Is it, is it how they're raised? Is it the culture? Are we doing something? What is it, I wonder? What will it take to listen to black women and accept what we say as it is? What will it take? Do you have to be attracted to us? Do we have to cook and clean and S and F? You can fill in the blanks for those. <laughs> what will it take? I wonder. Now a side topic I want to talk about is that black women are expected to lower our expectations because we are considered to be the undesirable group. We're told, oh, you shouldn't expect this from a man because X, Y, Z, or your standards are too high. You need to look for this, this, and this. That's why you can't keep a man. I let my man talk to me however he wants to. He could put his hands on me. He could put a cigarette out on my forehead. And you know, I'll still shine his shoes because at least I got a man and my bills are paid. Now sis, now sis, all of the white man's dollars in the world and you're taking abuse for what? I understand that we are at a disadvantage in housing, in jobs, in the glass ceiling, hello? I understand. And of course, I say abuse, I do not mean to discredit the experience of domestic abuse survivors. I know that's a very difficult situation. There's a lot of emotional, mental trauma that goes into why women stay, and I'm not well-versed enough to speak on that. So I want to say that just to clear the air that I'm not dismissing the experience of domestic abuse survivors when I say why women stay. I'm directing my speech at the pick me shows. Pick me, choose me, love me. These are the women that say someone is like, I don't want a man that has dirty fingernails. She'll be like, well, I love cleaning the crap out of my man's fingernails. I keep toothpicks in my purse so I can clean his hands whenever he needs it. Is that, you wanna be chosen so bad, huh? You really want Tyrell to say her. She's the one that's gonna hold me down. <laughs> really? We have to want better for ourselves. We have to teach our girls to want better for themselves, to demand it and know that they deserve it because we do. There is no reason that a black woman should have to settle for a black man that doesn't meet her needs for the sake of having a quote unquote pure black family. Why are black women supposed to sacrifice their happiness and autonomy and independence for the sake of appearances of having a strong black family? Why can't black women just have strong, happy families, period? The weight of upholding the family falls a lot on the shoulders of black women. That as black people, we should be more focused on loving each other, loving ourselves. Yeah, we have to focus on loving ourselves and unpacking why our quote unquote preferences always are at the expense of black women. Another concept within misogynoir is that black men aspire to have power over others like the white man has over us. So this includes having power over black women, children, LGBT black people, etc. When we look at why 
the black men acts the way they do in regards to discrediting black women. Black men want to control black women. I think this is a universal thing. Men like to control women. Society tells them that that's okay and that's what they're supposed to do. A recent case of this is the rapper J. Cole versus the rapper No Name. Now, No Name, she tweeted that your favorite rappers rap about oppression, but they are silent when it comes to LGBTQIA plus black people and their issues. Now, I'm a firm believer in the phrase, a hit dog will holler. So, J. Cole responded with a song called Snow on the Bluff, basically saying, yes, you're right that black men need to speak up for others in the black community, but you were really mean to me, so you need to say it nicer so you get your point across. And it got me thinking, why do black women have to tone ourselves down, quote unquote, dumb ourselves down to be more palatable? Why do we have to be palatable in the first place? We're all black people. We all face the same struggle in regards to race, not necessarily the intersections of gender identity and expression. Why aren't black women allowed to use big language? Why aren't we allowed to call you out on your BS? Why is it that calling out problematic black people is supposedly divisive to the movement? I don't believe that. How are you going to build a strong house when there are cracks in your foundation? How can we as black people unite and move as one, fight for equality for everybody? Because the last time I checked, that was the goal. How can we do that when there's a group that says, yeah, fight for black people. Oh, but not you, except for them. Mm, not really those. You know, it doesn't make sense. In the song, he said about how intelligent No Name was and that she was right, but it was that she said it too harshly. In her tweet, she named no one specifically. She just said rappers. And so the shoe fit, he put it on and he ran with it. And he was affected enough to make an entire song, not just to sit back and think, hmm, maybe my activism is a little nearsighted. Maybe I need to expand on what I'm doing and the message I put out. But no, he decided to attack the way she spoke about the issue. Now this is my thing because black girls are seen as grown before anyone else compared to any other race. We don't get the chance to be gentle. We always have been taught we have to tame our hair. We have to dress more modestly because of our bodies. And even now in academia, when we do the work, we do the studies, we do the reading and the research, we're told we're, we're told we're unpalatable, we're un uninviting. We're not warm and welcoming. Black women shouldn't have to be welcoming. We don't, why should I have to coddle you when I'm telling you how you did me wrong? Why should I have to hold your hand and explain to you how you oppress me? And then you're like, oh, well, that's cute, but like, I don't get it. That's going back to the untouchable black man I'm talking about within the black community, about how they're not prone to criticism, or if they are, it's just, oh, women don't want men to have any power. Women want to be on top. When we talk about women empowerment, no one has a problem with it, but when it's male empowerment, there's a problem. First of all, in our society that's ruled by gender roles, women will never have the same amount of opportunity, equality as men, simply because of that, our status as women. So to say that women empowerment is to the detriment of black male empowerment, you're all lives mattering us. Black men are all lives mattering black women. You see how messed up that is? Now we have to divide our energy into educating you all when we're all provided with the same resources and the same experience. And it goes back to why is it not enough to listen to black women? Why do we have to change and distort and twist our narrative to make black men listen to us? I'm gonna list this video in the description. One of my favorite YouTubers, Jade Fox, talked about this and she does a lot of really good commentary on different issues. And the comments were that it's hard for black men or men in general to admit when they don't know something and especially when it's a woman telling them that they're wrong. And the word was intimidation. Someone quote unquote says he felt intimidated by a black woman being smarter than him and made a whole song about it, but decided to call her a queen to try and mask the fact that his ego was hurt and he was being loud and wrong. It's like he's implying, how dare you be smarter than me in public? And I had to sit back because that's hitting the nail on the head. We're trying to present black people as a unified front to 
justify our humanity to racist people, which is a whole issue in itself. But then when women try and correct you so we can move forward more efficiently, we have the audacity. How dare we correct a black man? I have some trauma surrounding that because <laughs> my black kids know you're supposed to respect your elders even if they're very loud and very wrong, but that's a different a different topic. Relating this back to the black family, if black love is so important, then why do black men discredit black women? Why can't we speak? A relationship is about partnership, it's about listening, it's about sharing. So if you're in a relationship just to control me, what does that, how does that serve me? Black love should be about celebrating our culture. We relate on this level, so we should be able to share that and create a family and generations and strong traditions and history. That's the whole point. But there are these points of division that people get so stuck and stubborn on that it holds us back. Why can't we listen to black women? When a black woman tells you something, why don't you step back and say, you know what? I don't know about this. It's okay to not know things. The smart man knows that he knows nothing. Black women did the research. You have the same opportunity, probably even more as men. So to say that, oh, you're just radical and being too much when you're correcting black men is trash. It's a trash mentality and it's not going to get us anywhere. And it's very much to the detriment of the black family because children grow up to perpetuate what they see in the households when they see dad telling mom to be quiet, she can't speak her mind. It instills in them that men need to be dismissive of women and women need to sit and be seen and not heard. I shouldn't have to explain how damaging that is. I think you all understand that. Another aspect is that cisgender, had mostly heterosexual black men only fight for themselves. As I mentioned before, you have privilege being a male, so this action doesn't benefit the greater movement when we're talking about Black Lives Matter as a whole. Yes, black men have different issues than black women. There's not saying that it's wrong for black men to fight for themselves, but they do it at the expense and using the energy and resources of black women. Another comment under the video said that it's tiring that black women fight for black men so hard just for them to not do the same for us and chalk it up to quote unquote, y'all didn't tell us how, how are we supposed to know how to help you? But when we tell you how to help us, we're being too loud. You don't want to listen. We're trying to divide the movement. So which one is it? Once again, I ask, how can black women be listened to? What will it take? I want to get into why and this is quoting the iconic We Should All Be Feminist speech by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who said, we teach girls to aspire to marriage, but we don't teach boys the same. This is seen in a lot of cultures, obviously for women, but it goes back to my argument. How can you say you value the black family, but you don't value black women as a whole? Based off of this, we teach women to be in touch with their emotions and to aspire to love and marriage. We teach boys to play the field and be hard and F as many girls as you can and get your beep wet and all of these damaging things. And so for boys, we have these mixed messages. So do I respect women or do I pay respect to quote unquote the game, which y'all niggas should be benched canceled period do i pay respect to women or the game which one will make me look more manly there's a lot of things about masculinity that i don't agree with once again different episode once i have more background on the topic but there is the disconnect how can we teach our children to aspire to have black love obviously there are many showings of successful black relationship but also the black family can hold a lot of secrets a lot of damaging traits additionally on the topic of respecting black women there's been an influx of violence against black women perpetuated specifically by black men which is really disgusting so we all know tiktok we love it or you hate it the platform where you make funny videos dances whatever there's a trend of black boys making videos about how undesirable black girls are, how they're annoying, ghetto, asking where are the quote snow bunnies at, where are the white girls, I need me a white Latina X, Y, and Z girl, meanwhile calling black women trashy. And these are young black boys and teenagers talking to young black girls at this time in their life where their self-esteem is literally developing. So when you see your peers call you unattractive for features that you were born with, features that those boys' mothers have and grandmothers, the people that created them, 
it's incredibly damaging to our young black women. This is where the Pikmishas come from. They want to fight so badly against the colorism and Eurocentric beauty standards that have been drilled into the brains of these black men that they think if I sacrifice my ideas, my creativity and cater to his physical needs, putting our bodies, our mental health at risk, then that will make black men love me because I love them. Why don't they love me? And we're both black, especially for dark skinned women. So we have to look at where do these ideals come from? There's nothing wrong with enjoying women of different races, but again, it's always at the expense of black women. Where does that come from? I would really like to know because I'm a black woman. I don't know in the mind of a black man that trashes black women where, the, where that comes from. I would really like to know. In another vein of violence, there's also those terrible videos of a group of boys hitting that girl in the face with a skateboard, I think it was, attacking a girl in a restaurant, throwing one in the dumpster, and they're all sitting around laughing about it, laughing at the expense of pain of black girls and women. I don't know what culture is going on here, especially now with these kids on the internet seeing all these Black Lives Matter things and protests and the informational graphics. No, yeah, I know why. It's because of the 50 cents and the TIs and the Lil Wayne's raising our young boys to treat women terribly. And then to make matters worse, they produce black daughters, dark skinned daughters, that then they show them that they aren't worthy, that their lives don't matter, that lighter skinned, looser haired women have priority over them and that they're not beautiful. We really can't continue to keep failing our young people because they keep repeating the cycle and we sit and we wonder why nothing changes. I could really keep going on and on and on about this topic, but at the end of the day, listen to black women. That's, it's really very simple. I'm gonna leave in the description of this episode some TED Talks by black women that I listened to for some more background on this topic. Um, you know, just to solidify my thoughts into real comprehensible words and thoughts and actions, including the video about J. Cole and No Name that I mentioned before by Jade Fox. So I just want all my black women, all my non-binary black people, all my beautiful black humans to know that you are worthy. You are deserving of the world and more, a, a world better than this, a world better than we're currently living in. Your skin is beautiful, your hair is beautiful, your soul is beautiful, your personality, everything about you is worth being treated with the utmost respect and love and dignity. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you felt me. I hope we're here on the same page. I hope it made you think about something. I hope it made you think about someone that you could send this to. Hopefully it sparks conversations and helps somebody feel seen. And most of all, I hope you learned and enjoyed. You can follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Pages from My Notebook Pod on Instagram. And I believe it's Pages from My Notebook, a true life podcast on Facebook. Like the page to get updates for when I post new episodes. And also look at the episode descriptions and find all the platforms I'm streaming on Spotify, Apple, Google Play, which is crazy. That's all on my website, which is Miss Erica Danielle. Dot wixsite.com. I'm gonna buy the domain one day, I promise. Yeah, so I should really come up with a cute outro. I'm gonna work on that. But thank y'all so much for rocking with me, and I hope to have you listening again soon.